I wish you guys would listen to me. No, it's my turn to use the body. What's that, honey? My mom said from the front seat. Oh, uh, nothing, just singing, I said to her, and then whispered to the others inside my head. Shh, guys, mom will hear us talking to each other. I've always been a quiet and reserved person. During elementary school, I didn't have so many friends who shared the same interests I had. Most of my friends were always into makeup or boy bands, so I was definitely bullied for those kinds of things, as well as not being as skinny as other kids. I was just the only guy who wasn't into sports and acting rude and rowdy. The bullying was constant. At the park, on the school bus ride to school, during recess, I didn't fit their standards, the normal things guys should be into. It always felt alienating. I was the odd one out in my class. Even some of my friends argued and bullied me for little things. Though, I had my escape. I remember around the age of 10, where it felt like I wasn't always there. Like, I wasn't myself. Apparently, I was dissociating, but I didn't understand that when I was younger, and I really didn't even realize it until way later. When it was time for me to sleep, I would talk to myself in a whisper, but looking back now, it wasn't really me who was whispering. My mother, who I shared a room with, would yell at me to go to sleep. I was confused because I was sleeping. I didn't understand what this was until early into grade 9, where things seemed to get worse. I found so many more people who had similar interests and made a few more friends while keeping previous ones from elementary school. Something just didn't feel right still. I was still feeling lonely about something. When I talked to some of my online friends, I realized what I was feeling. I was the only one around my school who had dissociative identity disorder. I was the only person in my friends group who had other, well, people inside me to take over and deal with things I didn't want to. My friends would never understand it, so I never really told them about it. And when I tried, they usually just nodded and brushed it off. The majority of my high school year wasn't lived out by me, but by the multiple people with whom I shared a body. They wouldn't usually dress completely like themselves, but they would maybe have an accessory of sorts here or there, like on our school bag, for example. That was because they didn't want me to seem out of place suddenly and not be acting like myself so they fooled the people around us so no one would be suspicious. These identities took over all the time, usually to protect me, like they did when I was younger. However, they weren't as prominent as they are now. They were more active online, having the ability to be themselves more freely. They eventually started introducing themselves to my most trusted friends, using their own voices and calls and genuinely being happy. They shared laughs, they cried, they even had their own way of being them now. Though, we all still had to fool my family. This was harder to explain to my parents than anything else, so I never tried to tell them. Until one day, I was out to dinner and a pizzeria with my mother, staring at the table for a while. I finally got the courage to at least say I might have dissociative identity disorder edging on the fact that my others were sitting there with me, in my own head. My mother just blinked, asking how many could possibly be here, and what could have triggered it to even exist in me, and then responded with, Are you sure? It could just be schizophrenia. I knew in that moment that mentioning my dissociative identity disorder to my mother was a mistake. I was diagnosed with depression earlier on in my high school year, so sometimes I'd have depressive attacks that would lead me to having arguments with my mother. And it was just one of those days. During the argument, I tried to apologize for what had happened to start it, but my mother wouldn't listen, mostly making herself out to be the victim. I was going into a full-on panic, standing in the doorway of the kitchen until someone else took over. In our head, I started to hyperventilate, hearing them curse and growl at my mother which was very unlike me, but, well, it wasn't me. All they wanted to do was protect me, but in my eyes, it felt like they were just making it worse. 
So I pulled our body into my bedroom and cried. Cried into my pillow for so long, whispering to them, you are making it worse. I know my protectors were fuming because my feelings had never been considered during this argument. But it just felt like maybe to my mother, it looked like bipolar. I was scared. It's certainly not easy living with dissociative identity disorder, having to hide the secret, thinking I would just look crazy to everyone else if there was a sudden switch in my personality and being. I've wanted to talk to my psychiatrist about it for so long, but I'm just afraid to mention it in fear of looking crazy. Hopefully, one day, I'll have the courage to finally say, I have dissociative identity disorder, and I need to talk to someone about it. But that day just isn't today. If anyone else is suffering in the same way, maybe try and find someone who you trust completely and tell them about it. It's what's been working for me so far. I hope to one day be able to get up the courage to actually talk to a professional, but I'm just too afraid. <laughs>